Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be reviewing The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a very um, loved and very popular book as well. It came out last year and I read it mostly because I was trying to get kind of out of my comfort zone. From the beginning I thought that this would really be kind of on the better end of YA. And for the most part, I have been proven right, but I also have not been super impressed by the book in general, to be honest with you. And, you know, I have a couple reasons why that I will go through. Um, as usual, my style with reviewing is going through five points, which are writing style, the plot or storyline, uh, characters, depth, and my personal feelings towards the book. Let's just start because there's so many things to say. Um, writing style is one of the weaker points of this book. It's very standard, not incredibly special. Um, it seems to be, this style seems to be very standard for YA books, um, you know, that are very simple and very clear, crystal clear. They do pose, I think, a an advantage for the reader in the sense that it's not too hard for you to figure out what's going on and you know for you to kind of paint um, so much of an image in your mind of what's going on. Even though it's understandable it tends to be somewhat dull at times um, and that's also the case for this book. Sometimes descriptions are really dull. Um, narration is usually just really obvious. You get lines like I like this and that and this happened like this and I didn't say this in a bad tone but this happened and this and that I mean you know just a very blunt uh, writing style this is not subtle at all it doesn't really leave a lot to be interpreted the narrator often just also explains things to the reader by feeding you information directly not letting you figure out things by yourself so for writing style I can either give um, I forgot to mention that but for each point I can give either no star, half a star or a full star. So of course they make five stars at the end if they have uh, perfect points all, all over. And this for the writing style, since it is not terrible but it is kind of mediocre, I do give it half a star. And for this plot and storyline, it's kind of a strong point I would say for this book so it does have a full star for that. People have said that maybe it was a little too fast paced and that too many things happened and to be honest with you this book felt much shorter to me than it really is um i was able to read this so fast it's not even funny i usually am a, a very slow reader and it took me i think a bit less than a week to read all this i just think a big part of that is the fact that it's written um in a way that is rather simple like i said that's also kind of a con but the fact that it's so simple also makes it um, so easy to just want to go, you know, you don't feel tired from reading it and there's always some sort of conflict going on so I don't think it really goes through any parts that are particularly boring and I feel like all the scenes in this book are something that either develops character or it is part of the story and it does mean something within the story so I wouldn't really say that it's longer than it needs to be. The conflicts that emerged always seemed to me like they were natural and things that were um, in character. I do have to say that maybe at some points of the story, especially near the end, um, some things that happen may have seen a little um, unrealistic and maybe a little forced but I also like the fact that the at the ending not everything was perfect you know there were some things that just couldn't really be fixed because that's really how life is in reality I had some issues with the characters um, and with this point I do give it a half star again my main problem with this point is the fact that sometimes in a narrator star character just annoyed me like sometimes she just made some really unnecessary just judgmental comments about other people also the whole issue with Chris after um, the death of Khalil which I do not count as a spoiler because everyone knows that and that's how the story even starts I mean that's the plot of the story I feel like the way she acted towards Chris was just really unfair and I don't mean the fact that she 
felt some type of way about him being white. In fact, that's perfectly understandable because she obviously went through something very traumatic and after that her change, um, her view of white people is obviously going to change and maybe become more hostile and she had issues that were very natural. So that's not my issue. My issue is that she never wanted to communicate with him about it and she didn't break up with him either. She just left him hanging because she didn't want to explain things to him and I felt like that was really unfair because Chris really deserved an explanation. It just seemed so like teenager -y, you know? I know that she is a teenager but it doesn't really make it any less frustrating to read. She grew a lot throughout the story and I always rooted for her. I I always felt for her. I also liked her humor throughout the story. Sometimes she made comments that were actually funny and not just like random comments that nobody wants to hear. Most of the characters, I feel like um, some characters were actually very developed and kind of really nuanced as well and some were a bit more flat. The main characters, the ones that appear the most, did usually have a backstory and something interesting to say. The next point is depth and I think this is the part where a lot of you guys are going to seriously disagree with me. I give it a half a star and that is because of many things actually. I have many issues with the way things are handled in this book. Um, for one, there's not a lot of introspection coming from the narrator which is something that you can easily exploit when it is in first person and she mostly was just told lessons directly by other people in her life like the, her parents and stuff like that and she just kind of repeated them at some point to let you know that she learned them or whatever but she never really you know she was never very vocally critical of herself and the way she viewed the world um and kind of like making a very conscious change in how she views other people and that sort of thing i don't know it, it just goes Again, it just goes very surface level on that on that sense. It's mostly just some comments here and there about how she has to do this and that to be more socially acceptable, but it doesn't really go much beyond that. That's really where it ends for her introspection and her views of the world. Now, I think that one of the most important things to get from this book is that even if Khalil did sell drugs, he didn't deserve to get shot three times. I mean, this is obviously fictional, but you know, obviously it's based on things that really do happen in real life. And at this point, at that point, you just know that the 115 character was trying to straight up kill him. I mean, you're just not trying to defend yourself at that point, you know what I mean? But an issue that I had with the way that the book handled this topic is the fact that I didn't feel like it was an, at any point necessary to justify the fact that Khalil sold drugs. Because again, even if he had sold drugs for whatever reason it was, pe I mean, there was no reason for essentially a public execution. And I feel like a lot of elements of the whole incident there were left unexplored. For example, the fact when, when they said that, I mean, I don't know how much of a spoiler this is, but when 115 said that allegedly the hairbrush seemed to be a gun and that he heard him say something like I'll kill you or, or shoot you or whatever it's kind of interesting because it could potentially be an honest mis misinterpretation of what he actually said and not just him straight up lying he could have been expecting a certain way of behaving from people because they're black and maybe he subconsciously really believed that they were going to attack him even if they were just like a couple of teenagers doing their thing because they're because he has you know racist thoughts um like unconscious racist thoughts and maybe it wasn't just him trying to make himself the victim or maybe a little bit of both and this and that and the other but you know that element, for example, was just left completely unexplored. Um, I felt a lot of it was just handled in a very one-sided way. I know that it was obviously her story, um, Star Carter's story, but it just left a lot of things to be desired in terms of depth. Like I said, the writing style by itself um, does not uh, leave a lot of space for depth because 
things for the most part are just interpreted for you already, information is given to you, you're not really given the chance to figure things out by yourself and it's almost like the author, I feel like sometimes the author is trying to teach you a lesson more than telling a story and that's not really something that I appreciate that much from a book. Another way in which I saw that lack of nuance was in the way some characters were handled, okay? Some of them were just very bluntly placed in good and bad because some characters just had so many bad um, characteristics going on that there's just no there was it's, it's like the author was telling you just in case you are somehow sympathizing with this character you know let me let me make it obvious to you that they're evil as fuck you know i mean and i feel like sometimes that's just really unnecessary for example Haley is not only racist but she also has a really shitty personality king lord is not only a gang leader but he's also he also beats his wife and children you know, just in case you didn't think these characters were evil enough, let me just make it very clear to you, just so you have no doubt who's good and bad. I won't call it manipulation, but it does not give a lot of nuance. Some characters were a bit more well-rounded, I do have to give it to to this book. Um, for example, Aisha, I really thought, I really liked the way she was handled. And I do think that this book offers a lot of discussion on something that is very relevant, and it really dares to make a point about something that makes a lot of people uncomfortable to discuss. So the last point is my personal feelings on this book and I give it a full star for that. I was really entertained by like the family drama and stuff like that. Um, some things, even though some parts of the story were really dramatic and intense, some were really uh, enjoyable and fun. I really loved that her parents were so loving and realistic, you know? They were strict, but they were not evil. They, they really wanted to protect her. I also really liked Star and Chris as a couple. Um, I initially was kind of shipping her with Khalil, but you know what happened, so I was like, okay, it's gonna have to be Chris now. But I actually ended up liking Chris a lot, even though he's not... I don't think he's a very de developed and, you know, deep character, but... I still like them together and I really, my favorite character I think would be Maverick. He, I just love the fact that he likes gardening and you know, he has this really hard backstory but he's trying to protect his children but he also doesn't want to turn his back on, on his community and he feels, you know, tied to the place where he lives and that's something that I've, I felt I just wanted to know more of. So all in all, I do recommend reading this book very much. I did enjoy it. I would reread it. I'm also really excited for the movie. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think you can tell that I did not at all hate this book. I just think that there's some things about it that could have been better. Um, some of the characteristics I think could just be because, you know, it was aimed at a more teenage audience. I definitely had my heartstrings pulled more than a couple of times while reading this book. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see each other in the next one. Bye!